Let me see if I can walk you through how to do this particular crashing exercise. We have been given the normal time, the normal cost, as well as the maximum crash time and the crash cost per week. So that, in fact, would be what we'd refer to as the slope. I think they meant to say crash cost. Um, so one of the first things we want to do is to actually calculate the critical path. So let's do that. Uh, it looks like some of this has already been filled in for us. We'll add in the other values here. And we can see that our critical path is going to be this one here. And uh, the project duration is going to be 16. And our critical path is going to be this B, E, H, and I. Now our total cost at this time, uh, that's already been added up from our normal costs, and so that is going to be $680. So we need to see which one of these we want to actually uh, be able to uh, reduce in order to crash our project. It looks like our candidates here are going to be B, E, and H, since I cannot be crashed. So if we look at uh, these particular ones, if we look at B, if we look at E, and we look at H, we'll see that H is the cheapest one at $40. Um, it looks like we can crash this only one time, but we'll go ahead and do that. So we're going to um, be crashing H down. That will be the one that we will do. Okay, so I'm going to put in this um, next little network diagram here that I have one X for H. Go through my calculations again. I want to always double check to see what the critical path is because you'll see right here that now these two paths are equal. Okay, so we're at project duration 15. Um, we have crashed H down. So our um, total direct costs, our activities change was H. Our total direct costs, in this case, they don't have a place for us to kind of add that up. So we're just going to add the additional cost of crashing H, which was $40, to our original uh, $680, and that's going to leave us with $720. So now we need to look and see which ones we want to um, reduce now. And we have a decision to make. Uh, if we were to choose E, let's say that because um, E is $50, instead of choosing B, which is $70, but if we do E, we're also going to have to do either D or G. And in fact, if you do the math, you'll find that if we did that, D is going to be uh, $20, <coughs> and G is going to be uh, $30. So in fact, it is going to be cheaper to go ahead and uh, reduce B. Okay, So B is going to be the one that we're going to target uh, on our next um, round of crashing here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll change B to 6. We're going to uh, add in another $70. So if we add another $70 into the mix, that's going to be uh, $790. We're going to need to do our all of our calculations again. Put, carry all these numbers forward. We'll see that we have a critical path. We have basically two critical paths here. This B, 
D, G, and I. And we also have B, E, H, and uh, I. Okay, so we have the same situation again. So what we're going to do is we're going to crash uh, B again. Okay, because we um, uh, have these two paths here. Once again, we're in the same situation. If we crashed E, we would have to do D or G to go along with it. So we're going to go ahead and do B one more time. So that gets us down to 5X with B. Uh, we're now going to add another $70 to our total here. It's going to get us down to $860 because we changed B again. I guess I guess I forgot to r write that down up above. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to figure out what are we going to um, change to get this down another time period. So in this case, we need to, um, we can't do B anymore. We still have this as our two critical paths. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do E, because that's the only candidate down here. And E can be crashed. It's going to uh, uh, cost $50 per uh, time increment. And it looks like we can reduce it um, three days or three weeks or whatever the time increment is. Okay, but it's going to cost us um, $50 for that. And then we're going to have to do D or G. And D is going to cost us $20, and G would cost us $30. So we're going to do E and D, and that will get us down to the next project duration of 12. So let's go ahead and do that, and we're going to fill in all these values here. Okay, we have uh, added those additional costs of uh, D was uh, $20, uh, and we also had the additional cost of E, which is $50. So we had an additional $70 to add um, to our running total here, and so in this case we have $900 and $30 to get it down to a project duration of 12. And we've changed D, and we've changed E. Okay. So at uh, this point, we have a little bit of a conundrum because while we can do D and E again, you will notice that everything is critical at this point. Okay, so we also have to pick something from this path up here. So now we have to pick between A or F. Okay, and it turns out that A is going to be $10 and F is going to be $200. So we're going to crash uh, A. So in this case, we're going to be crashing A, D, and E. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We now take this down to 3x. It can only be crashed once. 5x here, 1x here, 5, 2, 1x, 3, 2x at this point because we've now crashed D to the maximum amount. We've got um, an additional ten dollars for A, we've got an additional twenty dollars for D, and we've got additional fifty dollars for E. So if we add that up to what we had previously, uh, our total direct cost this time is going to be one thousand ten dollars. Okay, to get it to project duration 
11. We're going to keep on going and see if we can go any farther. Um, we're getting uh, limited options now. We still have everything is critical. Okay, so um, every task here is critical. So something from each of these three particular paths that we have uh, is going to have to be crashed. So we only really have one candidate on each. We have F on this path, we have G on this path, and we have E on this path. Okay, so um, we can go ahead and do those. So um, we'll do that here. F down by one. Uh, e is now down to its maximum crash time. And basically, uh, we're done at this point. We can't uh, crash these um, paths down here. F is the only one that we could crash, and it was not going to help us. We changed E, we changed F, and we changed G. Um, e was $50, um, F was $200, and G was $30. If we add that, once again, kind of have a running total here is $1,290, okay, to get it down to time period 10. Now, if we put all this data into our little um, table here, we can actually figure out what the total costs are. So um, if we uh, put in 1290 Notice the project duration, this is the maximum crash we did. And then we add these to the indirect costs. Okay, so that's an addition when we're talking indirect costs. So this is our normal time. So we're looking to see if it's going to be worth crashing. Looks like it is because it looks like our savings on our uh, indirect costs are doing some offsetting of those increased direct costs. Remember, crashing always increases the direct costs, but hopefully will um, often decrease the overall cost of the project. So it looks like there is an optimum time point here at uh, 13 days. If we were actually to go ahead and um, graph this out, as they suggest, we would have something like our indirect costs. Um, oh, they'd be somewhere down here. And then we'd have our direct costs uh, going from somewhere up here to, let's see, 680, so I guess they'd be around, so that's indirect, direct, and then our total costs end up doing something Kind of like this, where we come down to 13, and then they go back up again. Not very elegant drawing on my part, but you can see that um, even though our direct costs are going up, the um, as we get to a shorter time period, our uh, indirect costs are going up enough that there's some sort of sweet spot here where um, we have the lowest overall cost for our project. Thank you.